Hello everyone and welcome to another very beautiful and a very important chess game by Bobby Fischer. This game is the 8th memorable chess game of Robert James Fischer and the title for this game is Meat and Potatoes. This game was played in Zurich in 1959 in the Zurich tournament and more importantly the opponent of Bobby Fischer is legendary Paul Keres himself and Keres is known as the uncrowned king of chess and why did they call him the uncrowned king of chess well he was a very gifted and a very talented player one of the super grandmasters in the time he was absolutely a chess genius from Estonia but he has never managed to win the title the world chess championship title maybe in that time in that era the Soviet grandmasters was dominating the chess world they were extremely strong players and they were also very hard to defeat but still Keres was one of the chess genius in that era anyway so Bobby Fischer who has the white pieces starts the game with playing e4 Keres played e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 bishop to b5 spanish opening a6 bishop to a4 knight to f6 and fischer castled bishop to e7 rook to e1 b5 bishop to b3 d6 c3 also paul Keres castled h3 knight to a5 bishop to c2 c5 d4 queen to c7 knight from b to d2 c takes on d4 c takes on d4 bishop to b7 knight to f1 rook from a to c8 bishop to d3 saving the bishop knight to c6 knight to e3 rook from f to e8 knight to f5 saving the bishop bishop to f8 bishop to g5 and moving the knight knight to d7 rook to c1 by bobby fischer and fischer is threatening to play d5 and the knight is pinned so i'm pinning the knight queen to b8 bishop to b1 and knight takes on d4 knight takes knight rook takes rook bishop takes rook e takes on d4 and it's white to move and fischer played a marvelous move well, Bobby Fischer sacrificed the knight. Knight to h6 by Bobby Fischer. What a move. We have g takes on h6. If king to h8, then knight takes on f7. Well, this is not the end of the world for black. But of course, white has the edge. Slight edge. And white is better in this position. So the critical, important f-pawn is gone. And white has created some weakness in the black's camp. So this is why Keres captures the knight. And what now? Can you see the next move of Bobby Fischer? Can you see the idea behind sacrificing the knight? Well, Fischer played queen to g4 death check. King to h8. If bishop to g7, then bishop takes on h6. And this is losing for black, threatening checkmate. Bishop is pinned. A disaster for black. So king to h8 and Fisher captures the knight. And getting back the material. Now you see why Bobby Fisher sacrificed the knight. Bishop to d5 by Keres. A tricky move. But of course, you have to be a chess petzer for capturing the bishop. So that's why Fisher played queen to f5. If e takes on d5, then rook takes rook. This is over for white. So queen to f5, rook to e5 attacking the queen, queen to f3, f5, bishop to f4, saving the rook. Queen to h5, bishop takes on e4. And Fisher played f3. If moving the bishop to a silly spot, then rook takes rook. So also the queen is attacking the rook. That's why Keres played bishop to c6, defending the bishop and the rook at the same time. 
Rook to c1, attacking the bishop, bishop to d7. Bishop takes on h6, rook to e6. Bishop takes on f8, queen takes on f8. Queen to h4, queen to f6. And in this position, Keres wants to exchange the queens. And Fisher is accepting to offer very interestingly. Well, in this position, Bobby Fisher is a pawn down. Well, he captures the queen. Rook takes on f6. And Fisher played king to f2, king to g7, rook to c7, defending the bishop, king to e2, f4, rook to a7. Well, Fisher is going for the compensation for the pawn that he lost. King to f6 and rook takes on a6. Materially is equal now. Rook to e7, check king to f2. Bishop to e6. Rook takes on d6. King to e5. Unpinning the bishop. Rook to c6. Bishop to d5. Rook to h6. Rook to c7. Rook to h5, check king to d6. And rook to h6, that's check again. King to e5. Rook to h5. King to d6. Rook to f5 by Bobby Fischer. And in this position, Bobby Fischer wants to avoid the draw. So if checking the king repeatedly, once again, black could take the draw by repetition. And in this position, of course, drawing the game is a good result for Keres. And Keres didn't play this game like the greatest chess genius of all time. It was not a flawless chess game by Paul Keres. And if you look carefully in the chessboard, Bobby Fischer has the edge. And these pawns of Keres is isolated pawns. And Bobby Fischer's pawn structure is looking much more solid. The pawn structure of Bobby Fischer is better. So Fischer is going to constantly target these weak targets. So getting the draw should be a good result for Keres. But Fisher played rook to f5. So there is no draw because of the repetition. And rook to c1, attacking the bishop, bishop to d3. Rook to d1, king to e2. Rook to g1 now. Keres is attacking the pawn. King to f2. Rook to d1. King to e2, defending the bishop. Rook to g1, attacking the pawn. Rook to g5, defending. Well, as you can see, Keres played the same moves all over again for taking the draw because of the repetition. So it's very clear that Keres wants the draw. Bishop takes on a2, getting back the material. But for a very short time, bishop takes on b5. And it must be a torture for black to defend these pawns. These isolated weak pawns, rook to b1, king to d3, h6, a desperate move, rook to h5 by Fischer, rook takes on b2, king takes on d4, Fischer is a pawn up, rook takes on g2, but rook takes on h6, that's check king to e7, king to e4, rook to g5, bishop to a6, bishop to f7, Bishop to c8, rook to g6, and Fisher is not exchanging the rooks, and he played rook to h7, king to f8, bishop to g4. Again, black wants to exchange the rooks, and finally Bobby Fisher captures the rook, bishop takes on g6, and king takes on f4. Well, as you can see, this is doomed, this is all over for black. So white has the two pawns and how to stop, how to defend these two pawns. But maybe as long as black has the bishop alive, maybe black has some chances. Black is keeping the hope alive for drawing the game as long as he has the bishop. King to g7, the game continued and Keres didn't resign. King to g5, bishop to d3. And of course the game continued and let's play these moves as fast as possible because this game was a very long game. So bishop to e6, king to f6, bishop to c4. 
And as you can see, Keres is hoping to draw the game. But Fisher is very accurate. So bishop to h5. What now? Keres played bishop to c4. But bishop to g6 now. That's check. King to g8. Fisher played the move and Keres resigned. Thank God. F6 by Bobby Fisher and Keres resigned at move 81. This game was an 81 move. War game. What a battle. What a war. And this game is also a very difficult game to commentate. There are too many moves. Well, my throat is hurt. It's a difficult game to commentate, of course. It's not like the short and instructive chess games of the 19th century of chess. A long and a complicated game. So let me show you the possible continuation. Well, obviously, in this position, black is losing all the hopes. So bishop to d5, and let's play these moves as fast as possible. So as you can see, black is trying to keep his bishop alive. But then bishop takes on f7, king to h7, bishop to e6. And black is getting checkmated. So queen to f5, king to h6, bishop to g8. This is not settlement. The only move, king to g7, queen to h7, checkmate. At move 95. What a game. So this is why after f6, Paul Keres resigned. And this was one of the notable and memorable chess games of Bobby Fischer. The eighth memorable chess game of Fischer. Meat and Potatoes. A funny name. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. And I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye for now.